Hey y'all. So we had Bible study today and it was absolutely great. Um, it was just so cool to, to see everybody on there that's been following along with us in the book of Acts. I decided to come on here tonight and actually read chapter 14 because a lot of you all have been following along with us and you want to be able to mark done on Instagram <laughs> with all the other chapters. So I'll go ahead and read chapter 14 for y'all. Um, and we'll have y'all be able to mark done here. Hello. Hey, Reverend Cheryl, Dr. Cheryl, how are you doing? I hope that your travels are going well. Good. Derek says I'm playing catch up. Yep. For everybody, we are on day 14. So go into your Bibles, go into Acts, catch up with us. But man, we've been learning so much good stuff. So, so much good stuff. Hello, everybody. Welcome in. I'm glad y'all are able to catch it tonight. Some of you guys probably couldn't catch it during the daytime. So y'all ready? I'm going to just read Acts chapter 14. And y'all know I give my little commentary as I go. And then the full Bible study that we did this afternoon is on YouTube, on the Trade and Travel channel. And you guys also can uh, get the replay link in your email, too, if those that register. So y'all ready to go? Hey, everybody. Welcome in. And um, just ex uh, excited as well. The market is doing great. So it had come da down after the Japanese yen and now it's back up. So that's exciting. All right, let's go. So let's get this in and then y'all can go back to doing what you were doing. So chapter 14. Um, in Iconium, they entered the Jewish synagogue as usual and spoke in such a way that a great number of both Jews and Greeks believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. So they stayed there a long time and spoke boldly for the Lord, who testified to the message of his grace by enabling them and doing signs and wonders. Stop. One thing I, I noticed here, and this actually was just, it's a small thing, but Barnabas and Peter are preaching to this area of the Gentiles. And it says that the Jews had kind of poisoned their mind against them. So it took longer, like the disciples needed to actually stay there a little bit longer and actually talk to the Gentiles more because they had to, to go against all the things that the, the other Jews had said about them. But what was kind of cool here in verse three is it says they stayed there for a long time and they spoke boldly for the Lord. But then it says that the Lord testify the message of his grace and enable them by signs and wonders. So for anybody out there who's been wondering, like, I don't really know if I have the strength to do, like maybe you, uh, God's asking you to do something and you're wondering, like, do I even have the strength to do this? Like, are they going to believe me? If I get up there, I'm not going to be good enough. The Bible says that they, they stayed there and they spoke, but it was God, the Lord, who testified about himself and he enabled them through signs and wonders. So you don't have to worry about what the outcome is for the people. The Lord will speak through you and testify of his own greatness through you. That's his job. His job is to testify of himself, right? And his job is to enable, enable everyone with signs and wonders. So you don't have to worry. You just show up and be willing, and then God will do the rest, okay? So it says in verse 4, But the people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews and the others with the apostles. When an attempt was made by both the Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to mistreat and stone them, they found out and fled to the Lacanian towns of Lystria and Derbe and to the surrounding countryside. There they continued preaching the gospel. So this is Paul and Barnabas that just had to flee. So now it says in, Act, in Acts 14, uh, verse 8, In Lystra, a man was sitting who was without strength in his feet, had never walked, and had been lame from birth. He listened as Paul spoke. After looking directly at him and seeing that, they had, that he had faith to be healed, Paul said in a loud voice, Stand up on your feet. And he jumped up and began to walk around. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted, saying in the Lacanian language, the gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. The priest, of, the priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the town, brought bulls and wreaths 
to the gates because he intended with the crowds to offer sacrifice. So what's happening right now is, do you all know the Greek gods? So Zeus and Hermes. So Paul and Barnabas are speaking to them. They see someone, Paul sees someone who can't walk. He tells the man, get up, and the man starts walking. He gets up, jumps up, and starts walking. We've seen this before, right? We saw this when Peter saw the man at the gate called Beautiful. We saw this when there was a woman earlier in Acts who uh, was dead. Everybody loved her, but, they, but she was dead, and they were able to speak into her, and then she woke up out of her death. And now this man, Paul, is actually the same Holy Spirit. So see, this is where you have to think about the same Holy Spirit that did it before, through different disciples, he used different people, but it's the same Holy Spirit was able to help these people walk. Now he's showing up again through Paul and helping this man walk. But these people, they believe in the Greek gods. So it's saying that they thought that Barnabas was Zeus. Y'all know from the Greek gods, they thought he was Zeus. And then they thought that Paul was Hermes because he was a good speaker. I, it, to me, I, I had never caught that before, but it's like, oh, these are real Greek gods. They really thought that these men were Greek gods. And then they were trying to give sacrifices to them. And then verse 14 says, so the apostles are like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> this, like, we're just regular men. We're not Greek gods. There's a, there's a different God <laughs> that we serve. So in verse 14, the apostles, the apostles, excuse me, Barnabas and Paul tore their robes when they heard this and rushed into the crowd shouting, people, why are you doing these things? We are people also just like you. And we are proclaiming good news to you that you turn from these worthless things to the living God who made the heavens, the earth, the sea and everything in them. In past generations, he allowed all the nations to go their own way, although he did not leave himself without a witness. Since he did what is good by giving you rain from heaven and fruitful seasons and filling you with food and your hearts with joy. So what he's saying is, you know how the, the Bible says that you will know God by his works and the things that he's done in the world. Like you can you can see his creation in earth and know that there's a God. So what what he's saying, what, what Paul is saying here is like there was a witness, like you knew because he was still feeding you. He was allowing rain to come down from heaven. He was still taking care of you. So you all knew that there was a God. That's your witness that there is a God. However, he let you all do your own thing for a while because they're speaking to the Gentiles. But now he's calling you to come away from that. Don't think about these Greek gods and everybody else. Now he's calling you to himself and telling you about who he really is. So that's what they're saying there. Um, verse 18, even though they said these things, they barely stopped the crowds from sacrificing to them. So the people were like, that's great and all, but we saw you heal this man. So we're about to sacrifice to you. You are the God that we see with our own eyes. So you are the one. And they're like, no, please don't. Please don't think it's me. Please know that this is God. How many of us, You've done something great and everybody starts praising you about it. How many of you all actually then point the attention to the Lord God and say, don't give me the praise, give it to God because he deserves the glory. That's what they're doing. And they have to work hard at it because these people continue to try to pu push them up and give them sacrifices. And they're like, no, like they're trying to do everything they can and say, no, no, this wasn't just by me alone. I didn't do this. This is God. And it says that they're barely got away without those people giving them sacrifices. And for those that have been reading with us, we know that in chapter 13, no, in chapter 12, at the end of chapter 12, there was a guy named Herod. He had spoken in front of the crowds and he wanted the same accolades as all the disciples had, had have been having. So he started speaking in front of the crowd, but he didn't give God glory. And the Bible says that he actually died right then. He got worms and died. That's at, uh, chapter 12, verse 23. So these guys have seen what happens when they don't give God the glory. They're like, ooh, we are not trying to play with the Holy Spirit. We're not trying to have no consequences. We're, <laughs> we're not trying to die. We need y'all to know that this is not us. This is the Holy Spirit. He is doing this. And it goes back to verse three. Remember, it says that the Lord was using them. He testified of his glory and his grace. 
by enabling them to do signs and wonders. So they're just coming back and saying, no, 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 this is the Holy Spirit. He's trying to, he's trying to tell you who he is through these signs and wonders. I know that doesn't sound like a big deal to us, but now as we are 2,000 years away, the reason why we are able to still understand and hear the stories of what happened in Je to Jesus Christ and what happened to all of the apostles is because people remembered the signs and wonders, right? And then they wrote about it. So that's what we're reading now. So it's just cool. The Bible's cool. So verse 19. So some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, and when they won over the crowds, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, thinking he was dead. After the disciples gathered around him, he got up and went into the town. The next day, he left, from, left with Barnabas for Derby. Now, I think in the past, if I was reading this fast, I would have just brushed over that. Brushed over the fact that they stoned Paul and they dragged him out of the city and they thought he was dead. Like they literally dragged him out thinking he was dead. And then the disciples gathered around him and after they gathered around him, he got up. That was so powerful to me today. I just thought about all the things in our lives and we talked about this in the Bible study so y'all can go listen to all the things that everybody had to say. But there's so many times that there's things in our lives that we think are dead. And we just kind of throw them away thinking, hey, that won't, that won't rise up. That relationship is dead. It won't come back. That job is dead. Sometimes your depression is dead. Maybe you have sickness or something like that. And it's like, hey, the Bible says I'm a, uh, not the Bible, but the doctor says I only have a little while to live. But the Bible says that these disciples gathered around him and he got up. And this is not like this to me. When I started picturing this, like picture that they have stoned him, literally thrown stones at him enough to knock him completely out. Then they have drugged his body miles outside of the city. And so he is sitting there laying down in front of them and then the disciples gather around him and after their huddle this man gets up and goes into the town and not only that the rest of the book says chapter 21 after they had preached the gospel in that town and made many disciples they returned to lystra to iconian and to antioch strengthening the disciples by encouraging them to continue in the faith and by telling them it is necessary to go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of god when they had appointed elders for them in, in every church and prayed with fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. I'll keep going because it's not much left here. For only four, uh, four verses left. They passed, they passed through Poseidia and came to Pamphylia. After they had spoken the word in Perga, there's a lot of places with a lot of names. <laughs> They went down to Attilia. From there, they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace to, uh, to the grace of God for the work that they had now completed. After they arrived and gathered the church together, they reported everything God had done with them, and then and that He had opened the door to faith. Oh, excuse me, opened the door of faith to the Gentiles, and they spent a considerable time with the disciples. Um, I just want to come back though to the huddle. They stone Paul. He's dragged out of the city. They think he's dead. And the disciples gather around him. And sometimes, like in my imagination, I tried to think through what could they have said in that huddle that after that, he got up. Because that's, 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 he is, he's, he's dead. Or they think he's dead. But after the huddle, he gets up. So in my imagination, uh, and we, we all thought about this in the Bible study, in my imagination, I imagine that they thought back to all the other times that somebody had seemingly been dead or was dead and that the Holy Spirit had just spoken to the person and said, get up. So I think about the woman in earlier in Acts where one of the disciples went in and said, just called her name and said, get up. 
So I wonder if they had just called Paul's name and said, Paul, get up. Your assignment is not done yet. We are not done with you yet. God has a purpose for your life. There are more Gentiles that need to be saved and need to hear the word of God. Get up. I wonder if they thought about all the times that they had healed all these people who were sitting and lame and whose whose parts and bones had been messed up. Just thinking, like, think about it. When the guy is, is lame and sitting down at the gate of beautiful, it says that his feet and his ankles all of a sudden started working again. So I imagine if some of the disciples said, I know that your arm is broken from the stones. I know that your face is, is, is crooked from the stones. I know that your back is, is misaligned from the stones. But right now, get up. And all of a sudden, when he gets up, his, his bones begin to align again. Something that was uh, messed up from the stones is healed because that's what they've seen. So the same Holy Spirit that worked in all those other times, now the disciples are in this huddle and saying, we know that same Holy Spirit is here today. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask for you to be healed. Get up. Right? What were they saying in that huddle? And then, you know what? I actually believe that there's probably some of those same disciples that were praying for forgiveness. And we're saying, Lord, you know what? I didn't want you to use him before, but he's gone through a lot trying to trying to preach your name. Lord, God, heal him and forgive his sins so that he can continue to go and work for work for you, Lord. Lord, there's a lot of people that have come to the Lord from his from his um, service to you, Lord God. And so we ask that you get him up and raise him back up so he can continue to fight in your name. Lord, we know that he actually put it because Paul, he was the one, his name was Saul before. He was putting all these pe- these Christians and believers in prison. He was killing them. Lord, I know there was a time where I asked for you to stop him and to kill him too. But Lord, now he's actually helping us as one of our brothers. And so Lord, now I ask that you raise him back up. Don't let him die now. It's too soon. He has work to do. Right? I just wonder what he was praying in that huddle. But no matter what it was, he got up. And so we know that when two or three gather together, things change. And so I just pray that that encourages you. If there's anything in your life, your own healing, someone else's healing, a situation that just seems too, too lost to be fixed, that you remember that God can do it again. He is a God that can do it again. And we literally see that throughout the book of Acts and especially here in chapter 14. Amen. I'm seeing, oh, such great comments. Be careful how you treat others because the one who will encourage you to get up might be a total stranger. Yes, God is in the midst. He got up. His assignment was just beginning. Yes. Can you imagine? So after this happens, so, uh, Paul goes on to write most of the New Testament. Most of the things that we read in this book uh, uh, that we call the Bible is, is letters from Paul. Had he died, can you imagine? Had he died there at the stoning, we wouldn't have more to this book. He had an assignment. There are people that still need to hear from you, Paul. Get up. Ooh, man, how many of us, there is somebody who is feeling down, who's feeling kind of like you don't want to keep going. I'm telling you now, there is assignment on your life. There are people that need to hear from you. Get up. Keep going. Go into the town and keep preaching. There is a whole generation Generations upon generations that will be changed because you. So keep going. Get up. Amen. Praise the Lord for his word. I hope that you guys continue to read the book of Acts. Um, Thank you, Lord. So have a great night. And yeah, continue to read the book of Acts. Go back and mark done on all the chapters as you read them. Um, yeah, and we just had we had a great time in the Bible study. I hope that y'all continue to follow along with us, and I hope that the book of Acts changed your life because as the scripture said, I can stay and I can speak, but it is the Holy Spirit that will testify of himself through his word and enable 
me to do things through him. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you and praise and give you glory. Y'all have a great night. Bye-bye.